This video will cover problem number two from chapter two in the vendor, the spacer plate. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind the rules of drawings apply to CAD and mechanical drawings. Just like the handout that you received a couple weeks ago, the views necessary for any drawing depend on the need. So you add as many or as few drawings necessary to get across the idea. Number two is a great example of a drawing where you don't necessarily need the top or the right or even an additional view to get all the information across to the reader to communicate what the drawing details entail. For this one, you can get away with one base view and one note the thickness of the material. Now looking at this, you'll soon realize that your title block may not be big enough to house your drawing. For number two, if I was going portrait landscape, my length of my drawing would be six point, excuse me, eight point zero, and the width would be six point five. And as we know, a standard sheet of paper is eight and a half by eleven, so you can see the problem we have. We're maxing out the eight and a half by eleven. So, we have to make sure that the scale that we're going to be using for this one, and in this case, I'm going to use one half just because the numbers will be nice and even. The scale is a number that you can quickly manipulate the numbers and a scale that will fit inside your title block. I could have used three quarters and changed all the numbers to 0.75 times whatever the number is, but for this one, I'm gonna stick with one half, okay? So looking at my rectangle or my square, I soon find out that my length will be four and my width will be 3.25. And those numbers, I just took them from there and divided it into two. Okay, so I'm going to start at an arbitrary point and measure one, one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to try to put my drawing somewhere in the center because I'm going to add dimensions later. So let me start at three. So one, two, three, and one quarter. So that's the top and the bottom of my drawing. Okay, I'm gonna grab my triangle here, and my length is going to be Four. So let me just go ahead and line this up. Starting from here, one, two, three, four. And to make sure this is nice and straight, let me create another point. One, two, three, four. Slide my T square over. Again, I'm using light lines, doesn't matter the length for the moment. And I can start connecting the dots if I want to. Okay. One, two, three, and a quarter. So it's that mark right there. OK, 
Okay. Now, I could go back to my drawing, so I have a major dimensions, and start going through it. So, I have 8, I have 6.5. I could work from the top or from the bottom, but I always like to take care of the diagonals first, so let's go ahead and focus on this diagonal. So, 6.5. So it's going to be three and a quarter. So we're going to measure three, one, two, three and a quarter. Again, this ruler is an eighth, so three, one eighth, two eighths, a quarter. And I'm going to be traveling half of 5.5, which happens to be set number. Or if you want to use some quick math, you can quickly realize that the difference between here and here is one. So all I got to do is go down one half from the top. Sometimes it's better to be efficient than recall information. And lucky me, that half is right there. Okay, so I know that this edge is real, so I'm going to darken it. And I'm going to use my triangle here and go over this point. And let me connect that diagonal. From here, I'm going to continue down. Again, I'm going to look at my numbers, so I know that I have to create this box here. So half of 25 is 1.25. So I just need to travel one and a quarter away from this edge and one and a quarter away from this edge. And let me just project that line up and project this line this way. And now I can go back and trace that. Okay, let's go ahead and take care of this bottom line. Now the basic shape of this drawing was fairly simple. It doesn't mean we don't have to practice good drawing techniques. Okay, so you always want to make sure it's still relatively clean. Okay. And just for the sake of this, because I'm going to use this later for dimensioning, I'm going to extend this line a little bit further up. Okay. So what I'm going to focus on next will be the circles. So I know, looking at the circles, that they are a certain distance away from certain edges. So for this one, it's going to be 1.25 and 1.5 because I'm dividing these numbers in two. So I'll start with this, then we'll work my way up. Okay. So 1.5 and 1.25. So from this corner, 
going to measure 1.5, so 1.5, and from this corner, one and a quarter. Using my T-square, I'm just going to slide that measurement up, nice and light, and using my T-square again, slide it over, we're going to line this up, and have a nice crosshair there that I can use for my stencil. Since I have a setup, I'll go ahead and use my circle. That diameter of that circle is going to be 2.5, so divide into one and a quarter. Luckily, my stencil I've used before is the same size, so I'm going to use one and a quarter right here. Okay, and just be patient with this. Don't try to rush it. Make sure the crosshairs line up. and trace your circle. If you used a compass, that's fine. One of the things I'm noticing on a lot of your drawings is the compass is being drawn too lightly. It's always a good idea to go back, get a stencil, and try to darken it if you can. Okay, so that's starting to pop and look good. And let's go ahead and look at the dimensions of our next circle. The next circle is going to be um, five away from this edge and 1.5 away from that edge. So we have 2.5 and 0.75. And like I mentioned for some of you in class, when you look at numbers as money, it makes it a lot easier to divide and to change. So pun intended. So let's go ahead with 2.5 and 0.75 with a diameter of 0.75. So measuring this, I'm going to need my T-square for that, I'm going to measure 2.5, so right here, and we're going to go down, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, six eighths is three quarters, Lightly project my line down. Okay. And use my triangle here. Project this line out this way. A little bit bigger than normal. And go back and make this a little bit longer. Just in case. Okay. And my diameter is supposed to be 0.75. And here it is, three quarters. So we're going to line that up. Three quarters. Line that up, turn it. Okay. And that is problem number one. Now, it's pretty light and clean. I would definitely go back and clean this up. But there's certain things in here that I'm going to leave and actually trace over. One of them is the crosshair. I still want you guys to practice the crosshair. So I'm going to reuse this light line. So. Nice and light. So we know the center of the circle. And so it looks pretty good. So all I want to do now, go back with my eraser shield and just clean that up. Okay. 
Same thing over here. I'm going to reuse that light line that I had. And just get a nice looking crosshair. You notice that I like to kind of offset my T screw, my triangle. I'm just doing that so I have a place for my pencil to travel. If you draw right on the line, usually you'll offset slightly off. So I like to have it a little bit off so I have space for my pencil to draw. I try to find the best part of the eraser shield and clean it up your drawing. Okay, clean that up. So now, since this drawing is done, we're going to go ahead and dimension. Okay, so I'm going to go similar to this and try to place my dimensions close. Okay, so the first dimension that I have that is pretty long is is 8.0 so I'm going to look at my drawing and try to space it out the best I can let me draw a very light line okay So that line will be where I draw my 8.0. So, no right or wrong way to do this, I'm just going to draw an arrow. Okay. And I'll try to put my dimensions somewhere in the center, somewhere nice located. So I am going to put it somewhere right there. And I'm going to put eight point oh. Okay. You could definitely go back with your triangle and darken it up just a bit. So Pops. Oops. Okay, can go back and clean that up later. So we have 8.0. So I'm going to go with the next biggest dimension, which was the 6.5s. Just going to reuse some of these lines. And I want to pull this out just a little bit further out. Again, I'm looking at the original drawing, trying to get the same spacing. Okay, there is no right or wrong way, but the drawings help for organization. Okay, so I am going to use a T square and draw that vertical line and let's say it's going to be right about there and I'm going to draw that arrow okay and use my eraser shield again and somewhere in the center more or less kind of erase the spot out so I can write my number and I'm going to write 6.5. Crack my T square and darken that up just a bit. Okay. 
Okay. And my next major one was this 6.5. So let me go ahead and extend this line out. Okay. Not really drawing a lot of lines. I'm just reusing a lot of my old projection lines and going back later and cleaning them up. Okay, based off of this, compared to this, try to space it out, so let's draw, draw a nice line, it gives me enough space, like that space right there. And go ahead and draw my little arrow. Can you try to find the number somewhere in the center? I'm going to use my eraser shield again. And go ahead and write in that six point. And darken it up a bit. I'm not pressing as hard as I would for my title block, but just enough to make it pop. And since I'm here, let's go ahead and put that next dimension. And I'm going to try to line it up with this center line here. So, a line going this way. And it right there. And end it right there. I'm going to draw one more line. So, that line that I was worried about earlier can go back. Definitely be my extension line. Or my center mark, so you can see how you can reuse these lines. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add, I believe it's 5.0. Let's go ahead and say that. I always like to look at the eraser shield and try to use different components. And I think it was a little bit further out, so I'm gonna erase this. And go ahead and write 5.0. Okay. And I do have 5.5, which was right here. So I'm going to line it up here and draw a light extension line there. And I'm going to reuse this. And I'm going to extend that up just a bit more. Okay. So, draw another line there, connect the dots. And draw my arrow, draw my arrow, and I'm going to go ahead and write 5.5. Go back with my T-square and just darken it up a bit. Okay, and since I'm here, let's go ahead and extend this line. And then I can draw my next arrow, which is going to be that 2.5 right there. Okay. You can quickly see how you can kind of get in a groove when you're dimensioning and you can quickly go 
back and forth. 2.5. Go back and darken that a bit, not too much. And go ahead and continue this over here. And reuse that line again. All this is possible is because I had some patience and did not draw with very dark lines. And we're going to go ahead and draw that arrow and draw this arrow. I'm trying to be a little consistent with my racing. Okay, so 2.5. That one was a little off center, but that's fine. I'm not gonna mark anybody points. I'm really looking for just organization and neatness. Okay. So let's kind of take a break here and kind of look at what I've taken care of. So I've been working my way out from From right to left, going back and forth, and looks like I need to focus on a couple dimensions here and a couple dimensions here, but almost done. Okay, since I'm right on the bottom, let's go ahead and reuse that line right there. We'll try to line it up with that dimension to keep it nice and clean. And since that line is already there, kind of reuse it. Okay, so I have my two points there. Go here. Here. Racer shield again. Another two point five. Go back to my triangle here and darken that up. Go ahead and clean that up. If you ever guys want to borrow an eraser, I usually have one by my desk. These white Strattler erasers do make a difference. They pick up the lead a lot better than your regular pink erasers. So 2.5 there, 2.5 there. These dimensions. We could try to pull it out. Now, that's the one slight difference from the model versus what we do. We're definitely gonna pull out this dimension on the outside, we're not gonna leave on the inside. So I definitely see a spot there that I can use in the future. Okay, so looking at this, I have 3.0 and 1.5. I'll go ahead and do that over here. So I'll pick a line right here and use it very lightly. And we're gonna go back to the triangle. And connect that dot there. Go with my arrow, go with an arrow. And let's go ahead and type in 3.0 Okay Grab my triangle again okay. 
this time I'll focus on that one. Okay. So I got my arrows there. Type in 1.5. Okay. Almost done. And let me do a quick inventory check. Models. So those are taken care of. Those are taken care of. Those are done. Those are done. Let me do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I always like to count the number of dimensions. So I have ten. I need two dimensions. Those two dimensions are going to be the diameters. So I am going to take this opportunity and kind of clean up my drawing a bit. And that is where I'm going to put that diameter. So, going to pick that point right about there, pivot it. Gonna go up this way. And I'll use this triangle here, flatten it out. And go back in and darken it. Okay, get my arrow. I'm going to use theta, and that should be 1.5. And I'm going to put that other dimension right over here. I have a nice spot for it. And I'm going to reuse this nice extension line. Theta 2.5. So I'm practically done. Got to add all the information. Make sure I put the scale is one half. But I want to add a little box here or here somewhere where it's nice and visible and we're going to let's put it right over here it's kind of an empty space so I'm just going to draw a box here again not really measuring just somewhere where I could put my note okay and I'm just going to go ahead and write thickness zero point one two five, and I'm all done. Nice clean drawing. Got to do some nice final editing and kind of clean up the drawing. But if you practice good pencil techniques and did not rest your hand too far on it and you did not use dark pencil strokes you should be fine you should have a nice drawing that is easily erasable and you can go and fix it okay so we have this and we have that hope this video helped keep the good work up don't get discouraged. If you need help, you can always ask Mr. Fausto. Thanks again.